This video is sponsored by me. Tyler of Knowledge Hub. Did you know I have another channel? I talk about things that you probably don't care about, but if you do, well, it's there. So make sure you use the code to click on the link in the description if you want to know or don't know more about this. On to the video. Artificial intelligence. It's wow. It's cool. It's an idea that has permeated into every realm of predictions in the past. It was to define our decade, our century. The world would of course be taken over by sentient machines at the behest of one William Smith. Of course, by the very nature of me making this video, the topic at hand, and what I've covered in the past, you already know that a lot of bad predictions have been made or regarding this idea. And I can't deny that, but these, these are a special kind of bad. We're talking sentient, self-aware AI. Something that's, well, hard to describe is just as much technology as it is psychology or philosophy, psilosophy. I could go and list every failed prediction, but you already know what that would mean. They all follow a pretty general theme, and most rely on the idea that some time in the early to mid 21st century, the singularity would take place. Now the singularity is, well, it's a lot of things. At its simplest level, it's the point where technology becomes so advanced it changes the progression of the human race forever. While it's often applied to artificial intelligence, it doesn't necessarily have to come from this, but AI is the big ticket item. AI that could create intelligence smarter than itself. For being such a cited event, it's actually really vague in what it would entail, part of that mystery being the draw of the singularity idea. Now, for most people, AI and the idea of sentient AI coming around in the next few years is absurd. Unless you're a chuckster like Elon Musk, you probably don't need the media attention. But when these predictions were often made in the late 20th century, there was that exponential growth of processing power, and it seemed like we would hit a point where we could or should reach the potential of the human brain. And we did, at least how they interpreted the power of the human brain. See, it's not as simple as just Googling how powerful is a person's brain and getting a number in teraflops or capacity size in gigabytes. At least it shouldn't be. Over the course of decades, the actual capacity of the human brain or how it relates to computational power has changed alongside those increases to computational power. We can see in this 2000 paper from uh, the US Army as the human brain being capable of petaflops or exoflops. These numbers were far off back then, but now they're achieved by the best supercomputers. But on the other hand, estimated storage space of the human brain was cited as 2.5 gigs. I, I don't know if he means like memory as in RAM or hard drive space. As I assume he means hard drive space. But if you check these very same questions now, you'll get a very different answer. Right now, the estimate is the human memory capacity is literally a million times higher than this. Processing power wise, that number more or less doesn't exist. We just don't really know. In short, the fundamental flaw with AI predictions in the 20th century were based on the assumption that computational power could equal brain power, which doesn't appear to be the case. After all, your brain is not entirely a computer. It doesn't do calculations one by one really quickly. It's more asynchronous and not quite as exact. And this means moving away from silicon and binary code. I've covered the issues with this in the quantum computing video and such, and you know this is very, very far away if it ever happens at all. With this in mind, it is possible that sentient level AI is not coming this century. It might be hundreds of years away. And that notion isn't as uncommon as you might think. The idea that AI is not something of 2050, but 
2150 or 2250. While this isn't often cited by researchers, because how would you know, it is often cited in media. It's not to say that media is great of predicting the future. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more misses than hits, but it is important, especially in AI, because I'm sure to the average person, the first thing that comes to mind with sentient robots is Terminator. In the film, Judgment Day originally takes place in 1997, and later incarnations revise it to 2004, but regardless, the whole start of the 21st century is defined by robots taking over. It's easy to laugh at and say, haha, they were wrong. Then again, it, it is a movie. It would kind of ruin the plot if it took place 100 years in the future. Also, I gotta mention the film Nine, because I feel like I do that a lot. It's mostly the same plot, but everybody is Sackboy from Little Big Planet. And this takes place in the past, kind of. At least that's when the robots were made, so... This is all for thematic elements, not for timeline realism or, you know, predictions. For that, we gotta go more to the Isaac Asimov territory and films inspired by such. Now, he wrote a bunch of Robo stories, many of them compiled in the collection iRobot, and of course inspired several films, including uh, iRobot. Now this story with Will Smith and robots that like are kind of alive and stuff, you know, these events take place in 2035. We're not probably getting here in the next 10 years. A better prediction comes from another story from Asimov. That was also adapted into a film. It's Bicentennial Man. It starts around 2040 or 2050. And when it begins, Robin Williams here, he, the AI he is isn't quite human or like the same level as the human brain, but it can learn. More or less over the course of 200 years, Years, technology gets better, he gets upgrades, and you know, the AI does better AIing. He learns to live and laugh and love. It's a good movie, but, but you know, 2040, uh, I don't know. The more realistic depictions I've seen in film, well, it's a lot further out. Stuff like AI, which takes place in 2100. The AI itself is, for the most part, sentient. It's created to replace the lost child of a family, and it seems sentient, but, you know, it's never fully explored whether he is self-aware. And that's one of the biggest problems with AI. A question that isn't scientific, but purely philosophical. Because how would you know if an AI is actually alive or just emulates the emotions and responses so accurately that it seems alive? I don't pretend to have an answer here because nobody does. Overall, though, when I say AI and artificial intelligence, the fact that sentient life is what often comes to people's minds, well, that is odd. Because non-sentient AI, just the AI we have right now, is probably the most exciting technology in the near future. So much has happened over the last even five years, and while that might not bring us too much closer to data, it still should make all of our lives quite a bit easier. And this is such a broad topic of AI and robots and all that stuff that I really can't cover it in just one video. Not even like making a part two, but just, you know, I'm gonna have to make a lot of videos about just this. So that'll be coming here pretty soon. Anyway, if you want more videos, again, I have another channel. You can check that out or don't. I talk about Space Jam.